Jimmy G really still on the 49ers? I mean, they they have to turn to hand, to Lance, and they've got to give Lance the 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 room to be the guy, win or lose. Like they that that's the way it works when you trade up into the top three uh, of a draft and give up all the draft capital for somebody. At some point, you must turn to him and go with whatever flow occurs. Um, and and not have him look over his shoulder. I mean, it's that's simple, I, I think. Um, but it's stunning to me. It's stunning to me um, that that that's a possibility. Really, the F- Niners haven't turned the page from Jimmy G, regardless. In your estimation, Ian? I mean, usually, I, I would say this. I think a little differently than what you just said there, because for me, it's like. You definitely want to turn it to Trey Lance. You believe he's the quarterback of the future. You trade all that capital to get him, which is already gone. So, in a way, it sort of doesn't matter because it's already been spent. You definitely want to turn it to him when he is ready. And that is what is so, 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 so interesting to me about the Garoppolo situation. This isn't Baker Mayfield, right? Because right. he does not have the kind of guaranteed money that Baker has. So, if they wanted to trade Garoppolo, which they do, they could do it. You know, as soon as someone would take on a quarterback who had major arm surgery and has not, you know, to my knowledge, thrown yet, right? Um, so I would say, you know, they'd like to trade him, um, but they don't have to. And if Trey Lance isn't ready and you have Garoppolo for $20 million and you can't trade him because he's not healthy enough in time to be traded, like, you got to let him get out there and compete. Like, what if he is the better quarterback? Like, no one dies if Trey Lance has to sit for another year. Doesn't hurt anyone. Except maybe Lance's development, right? I mean, so what? I mean, so in year three? No, what I'm saying is that in year three, there won't be the ups and downs that they're trying to avoid in year two because Garoppolo's still there. I mean, you're still going to, there's still lumps to be had, right? I mean, and the, the sooner you get them out of the way, the better it is long term for everybody. Usually, that's the way it goes. Certainly when you don't have the first round. I know you're spent, but when you're sitting there smoking them if you got them, when the rest of the draft is going through the first round in Kansas City next year, that, that's, that's, that's when it really hits. It does. You know? And that's what's going to be so fascinating about this. Is like it is a fine, fine, fine line between putting a guy out there when he's not ready and having it go badly and not being able to recover. We've seen that sometimes. I'm not saying it's going to happen here, but right. that has happened in the past. That's a risk. And saying, all right, he's got to learn on the fly, and it's just time to go. Because the problem the 49ers have, and it's a major problem, is that their roster is good. And they, assuming that Debo Samuel is on it, they should be ready to compete for a playoff spot again. And is it worth long-term development of your quarterback to sacrifice maybe that this year to have him learn on the fly? Or would you say, you know what? You just spent another year learning. That's fine. We have Garoppolo, who's literally took us to the playoffs last year and mm-hmm. played a bit incredibly tough situations, including two injuries. Just give it to Garoppolo again and figure it out after the year. So what is with Debo as I send you on in your day? I mean, one month ago uh, from this very day, we were in Vegas for the third round of the draft, and that's all everyone was talking about all week long, and now it's all quiet on the Debo front. What's the deal with that? What do you think? Debo was actually in Vegas while we were uh, just hanging oh, out, which was kind of funny. That's odd. Um, down, it was very strange. He was downstairs at my hotel during day three when I was talking about him oh, upstairs on the television. That's very strange. Well, you should have gotten him upstairs. Is what you should have done. Certainly I, since, certainly right. since, uh, um, certainly since we we Ed Marinara'd you off the set at one point, so you could have had time <laughs> to go downstairs and get him. So, you know, what a great moment that was. <laughs> yes, it was. Um, uh, so. Basically, you know, I don't, I don't get the sense that they've had the conversations yet that would bring him back into the fold, right? Like, I know they would like to. I know Kyle can be very charismatic. I know they have major plans for, for him. I know they drafted a running back in the third round that would, assuming it works, would take some pressure off him, which I know he wants. They just aren't there yet. Um, we'll see if they get there. You know. My guess, without really knowing, is that he's there at minicamp, but we'll see. If not, you know, the time right up around training camp will be fascinating to watch. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.